this is them saying there's something going on, there's somebody shouting there, what is going on? It's a curiosity poll. People who say work with chickens quickly understand what they're trying to tell you. That's quieter. If you wonder about the, um, the One Piece Wonders, we, ha we have a, a policy called Biosecurity Policy. The biggest single risk to our chickens is people is, uh, uh, bringing disease into them or bringing disease in from outside, things like avian influenza or infectious bronchitis, things like that. Uh, humans are more likely to bring them in from outside as they're coming in out of the chicken shed. So we make sure that we wear these uh, disposable overalls when we're in the shed or um, overalls we only use in the shed so we don't bring disease with us. This is the egg store, the egg collection area, um, and it's also where the feeders are. The feed that these guys eat is, I don't know if you can see, you can see that, it's, um, it's quite coarse. It's ground up uh, mainly grain, about 65 to 70% grain. There's soy in there for protein, uh, soy oil, uh, limestone for grit to, for the eggs, calcium carbonate, so it's good for the eggshell, but also helps the digestion. And it's ground up, not completely to dust, but fine, so they can't choose and pick. What they tend to find is the bossy hens will pick the grain out and leave the other bits for the rest. So uh, it, it's, it's ground up to make it so you can't pick it out. Chain feeders are all on timers and we just do it do, do automatically. What we have on the wall is that when we're not here, obviously because the stockman's only here for uh, two or three hours a day, is a, a, a data system that collects uh, data from within the shed. It weighs the birds every day. Um, how much water they're drinking, how much feed they're eating, um, temperatures, carbon dioxide, that sort of thing. So then you can send alerts to us on our phone, or it's cloud-based, so you can send alerts to, alert to our phone if something's going wrong when there's no stockman on site. We're just starting to add things like acoustics to that, microphones basically. Chickens' um, vocabulary is quite simple. We can only say, an adult bird says about 26 different things, and we're looking to be able to recognise those sounds uh, by computer. So that then again, if the chickens are panicking about something, even if the, all the system is saying it's wonderful, if the chickens are saying there's something wrong in here, you get an alert on your phone to tell you. Uh, to try, it, it's, everything's about improving the welfare of our birds. Uh, they're free range, they're high welfare, so we need to make sure that we're actually delivering that. Helen's over here, she's actually busy uh, collecting eggs. As I don't know if you remember, but I said that the egg belt comes down the centre of the nest, so you can see where it comes through the wall out of the centre of the nest, and then down the belt, and into the egg collecting station. And we collect eggs about twice a day, sometimes two times, sometimes three times a day. Um, once they collect here, Helen sorts out the, any that's, that's cracked or dirty, uh, misshaped eggs, and the obvious second quality eggs, and then the first quality eggs go on the pallet and go off to the factory to be um, processed. What else can I tell you about in here? Proper little family operation, I guess. <laughs> And what Helen's doing here is she's stacking the eggs points down. You always keep an egg point down. For those of you under that quality, um, point down storage, because that gives the air cell at the top and keep them in the fridge. And don't keep them things like near things that, uh, like garlic or onions, which are very quickly the shells fall and they can take on the taste of those in the fridge. So don't put them on the back of the fridge door with the onions next door to us. Guys, wake up. Uh, it's dawn, I guess. Um, the lights come on. Get, uh, 16 hours of, of daylight and then they go to bed at, at just at night. We let them, it's at the free range, the daylight, daylight access to the outdoors, so we let them out um, first thing in the morning and then close the potholes up again as it gets dark at night. The idea being that you don't want to leave the potholes over at night because the foxes can, can typically buy chicken for fro foxes, I guess. So, what you don't want is the, um, the fox to get engaged with chickens, so that would be a disaster. Does any of you keep chicken, keep chicken at home? Oh no, the fox never misses them. So other than that, it's a, it's a fairly simple operation really. All of our uh, chickens are all um, RSPCA assured uh, and all uh, BIC, British Egg Industry Council, so we put the line on the eggs when they, when they get to the factory. Um, is it an assurance that the, the, the products are more free and reasoned and looked after the high welfare standards?
we get these guys at about 16 weeks of age, somewhere between 15 and 16 weeks of age, from the reading farm, where they go from day old chick to, um, to point of lake. And after that, they come into here and they sit, they, 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 uh, sit around the shed, learning about the shed, learning about their new surroundings for a month before they start laying eggs, about 19, 20 weeks of age. Um, Someone has asked, what is the lifespan of a laying hen? Two, questions, two answers to that question, I guess, if I'm mean, uh, 100% honest. On, on a laying farm, it's very, um, they're very busy laying eggs. We encourage them to lay eggs year round. So after uh, 14 to 16 months, the shell quality gets to a stage where you, you can't keep them any longer. If they're kept in your backyard, we'll keep them for four or five years. Uh, the thing is that your egg shells, you pick them up in your backyard, just have to go into the kitchen. I always have to go on a truck to a factory, to a, another truck to a supermarket in your car to get home. So they have to be really uh, good quality shells. So it's, it's about an 18 month production cycle. Uh, birds come in 16 weeks, they go out in 18 weeks, and then we, uh, a, a month cleaning around, cleaning down, washing out, getting everything disinfected, ready for the next block. We're really, really worried about disease issues with our birds. Think, uh, because there's no real way to treat them once they put the green leg, no, we, we try not to use antibiotics. So we vaccinate them against, and the vaccinations are a really topic at the moment. We vaccinate them against absolutely everything you possibly think of. Unfortunately, unlike COVID, there isn't a vaccination for influenza. So when we get to major risks in the UK, and DEFRA says that the high, there's a high risk, a very high risk of air influenza in the UK, we shut the birds in. Um, and this year, they, they were shut in earlier on this year, and we've let them out uh, again next week. Although interestingly enough, and unfortunately, there's been two more cases of avian queens in the UK in the past two days, uh, after three or four weeks without any. So we'll just have to uh, cut our fingers and and and, 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 go, and be very, very good on our wise security. One UK code. What we actually do here, the gallons are doing at the moment, the far end of the um, egg table, you can see there's a, a new logo, it's a printer, and we print on the end of the eggs. Where there's the farm number, so it'll be a one UK, so one says free range. In fact, this plot because still can say zero UK, uh, and then our farm number one zero three three two. And if you actually go on our website and put that one zero three three two number into the website, it'll show you the farm that the eggs came from. And this, this picture is the, the, the chickens outside are raising as well, and you're on the side. Do we venture outside? We can uh, do that. I did promise that I would show people around the range, uh, and I did uh, on the on the leading uh, last week mention that the, the forecast wasn't particularly good, and sure enough, it's throwing it down outside and blowing it in. So, <laughs> so it could be interesting when we go out there, but at least we can show you a bit more about what goes on outside. What we have outside, I can probably explain it in here, I guess, is um, we discovered, we started um, modern free range on our farm in the late 80s, very, very early 90s. Um, and for the first four or five years, you have free range birds and no birds outside of the shed. And then we just happened to notice uh, around the woods, I guess, that there's, if there's any trees in the field, the birds would race to be under the trees and quite like to be under the trees. So we started planting uh, trees outside our range in 1997, I think we started doing that. And that encourages us to have birds to go out. And to be fair, as a free range egg farm, we've got sick of saying to people, oh, there's no eggs out today because it's too sunny, it's, it's not sunny enough, it's too cold, it's too warm, it's too rainy, it's too windy. There's always an excuse, but actually, the real reason was, these guys are the bottom end of the feeding pyramid. Everybody outside wants to eat you. So they, they, they like to be under shade and, and hidden. So when the buzzard flies past, or, or, the, or the fox goes past, it doesn't see them because they're hidden. And it gives them more than an opportunity to come back to the shed without having to race in and, and panic to get, get inside. So it just makes them look happier. And it's, it's, it does actually balance out the, the, the climate. So it's just like today when it's blowing a gale and, and raining like that. Under the trees, it won't be too bad. What it also does, which uh, we never thought about at the time, but actually we think about it now, is that it, it does increase the biodiversity. So it would be like these particular trees outside, you probably won't see them today, it's a bit wild. But there's, there's red squirrels that come back into these, these uh, plantings now, which we've never seen before. Uh, lots and lots of bird species, quite a few of those are red list bird species, so uh, at very high risk of, uh, in, in the UK. It's coming into these planted areas. And actually, most of the industry in the UK, most of the free range industry in the UK, is also has tree planting now. We did a bit of research probably 15 years ago, which showed that uh, with, that was at the Farm Animal Initiative down in Oxford, which is the old Oxford University Research Farm. They did put some science into planting trees that showed that actually the birds are healthier 
uh, less disease, uh, less mortality, better quality eggs. So we, it, it's a nice place to put. So we, the whole of the industry has kind of copied that now because of that. The RSPCA is part of their code of practice, you plant trees outside. So that um, we have a minimum of, of all our farms of 20% uh, of the, the range area outside is planted with trees. And we also range, on, on this farm, we range at half the normal UK stocking rate. The normal UK stocking rate is 2,000 birds per hectare. We range at 1,000 birds per hectare, which is about 400 birds per hectare when they're outside. And the trees also actually, so we, nowadays you think about sustainability and, and biodiversity, they also absorb carbon dioxide. And we're just doing quite a bit of research work at the moment about the ammonia they absorb. And some of these smaller uh, free range units, the air will leave this site the it arrives as far as ammonia goes because the trees absorb it. So we've got a couple of questions, one of which is, what is the capacity of the hen sheds? This hen shed is 3,000 birds and it's, all, it's an organic shed. In the UK, you get 3,000 birds maximum flock size for organic. Uh, on free range, it's 4,000 birds. But you can get multiples of 4,000 birds for 16,000 birds. So on some uh, commercial units, there'll be 16,000 birds with four 4,000 bird colonies uh, within that. This one, like I say, it's organic, so it's only 3,000 birds in here. The other question is, um, are the hens vaccinated? As I kind of touched on, the hens are vaccinated for everything you possibly think of. Uh, EBV, don't even tell me, ask me what EBV is. Infectious bronchitis, Newcastle disease, salmonella twice, um, so that the, the, the pad of the lion code, the whole of the, uh, the UK lion flock, it's the lion approved is salmonella vaccinated, so they're, they're safe. <coughs> uh, what else? Gumbra, Marrits, they're all poultry diseases of one sort or another that, that can affect birds in their, in their adult lifetime, so we vaccinate before that. Um, you link that in with the data system that we're just putting in and out. So most of these flocks, you can manage to get them uh, through the whole of the lane period without having to treat them with antibiotics. Again, we've got a lot of whole industry, but most of the industry is very um, aware of the antibiotic usage. We've never been big users anyway, but uh, like making sure we use absolutely no antibiotics whatsoever. In fact, it's against the code of practice now to use any that are uh, critical to uh, human health. And even the ones that are critical to human health, uh, we use them very, very sparingly. Far better to catch the problem with, with, with picking up the leaking less feed, eating more water, the, the behaviour of the birds, the sounds they're making, and pick up illness before they actually need treatment. So you can things like, use things like appetite stimulators or, or vitamins, just to, uh, probiotics, just to encourage the good health so they don't have to get in the first place. Someone else has asked, do they all put themselves to bed if they are outside or do you have to herd them in? <laughs> it's an interesting one is that most of the time, most of the time they, um, they put themselves to bed. And we do a little bit of psychology there. They have a, a bit of like the Pavlov's dog um, syndrome. So we, uh, we run the feeder, maybe half, we, we don't run the feeder for three hours, in late afternoon, so that they're a little bit hungry. Then we run the feeder and they all come inside to eat, so they need to shut the door. Otherwise, sometimes the odd ones won't come in. But there, are, there has been occasions, uh, as you want, I remember being, they would all be having Coming back from the pub at uh, closing time one night, as you do, shut the hens in, and it's a mid-June night, and it's 24 degrees outside, and all the birds have decided they don't want to go to bed, they want to stay outside. You spend the next two hours <laughs> catching chickens, because if you don't, the fox will eat them. Um, so it's, sometimes it can be obsolete, but most of the time it's not too bad. That's it for the Any moment. Any more questions? How are we doing for time? 20 past. Should we head outside? Okay, so we'll head out and go and have a look around the trees outside. Okay, so it's a bit windy, uh, so it looks like someone might take a Not so good. <laughs> what we have outside the chicken shed is the first kind of four or five metres clean stone now. The idea is when the chickens climb the trees or the scratchy areas outside where it's, it can be dirty and feet are dirty. By the time they get the dust stone and pop holes inside, the feet are clean so you don't get dirty eggs. You don't mess with people, they lay an egg, you get, uh, get dirty eggs. And these are the pop holes here, you can see, we just open the little holes, open the pop hole, and the birds can get out from there. This sort of thing is, again, it's just a bit uh, given something to do. They do have a little bit of a habit sometimes, not all flocks, but occasionally they start to peck each other. Um, feather pecking we call it. So this is one of those things, the peck of these instead. Anything that can just wave about, a bit like a kitten and, and wool I guess. It um, gives them something to do, gives them an interest. So they do that rather than each other. It's not a massively common problem, but it does, it does have to be. 
coming to uh, in the bud. The woodland that we plant is the woodland we plant is native to the area so it's technically it's a double way limestone or woodland. Um, that's a mixture of oak. Uh, it was ash but we can't plant ash anymore because ash died out. Um, so throw a little bit of sycamore in there which is the native species it grows quickly so it'll probably take over from ash on this side. Um, silver birch, aspen, willow we plant two, a, a few, maybe 20% of the, the planting is, is ivy willow or poppy so when you build a new chicken shed it gets the, the trees get grown quickly and then we take those out after 10 years and leave, leave the natural woodland. The part of the industry that we're in obviously the free range industry is, uh, is becoming much more going down the stems three constituents, our carbon uh, and obviously with, with a lot of sequestration of our trees is in a good position I guess but it's things like using soy and making sure that soy doesn't come from because obviously well not obviously but it's a fact that the the, the best quality soy for, for poultry comes from Brazil so you have to make sure it comes from parts of Brazil that aren't um, Amazonian rain or haven't been Amazonian rainforest and that's a little bit of a cop out I think I suppose because if, if we're taking soy from those other areas somebody's taking it from Amazonian areas so it's it's not an ideal world and like so we are looking at, at changing the the protein levels uh, or the range of proteins in our diets so we can get rid of uh, soy out the diets. The trouble is that, uh, that most of the sunflower you put in instead of the, um, the soy comes from Brazil anyway. So we have to then try and see if we can get UK agriculture to grow uh, sunflower going forward.